Welcome back everyone, Russ Barkley, with another short commentary on topics related to ADHD. This time we're going to talk about a, a rather serious one. It's one that I've been discussing in my workshops for more than 20 to 25 years, but also in my personal clinical work when I was meeting with families or with adults with ADHD. Uh, it was something that I found had not been mentioned in either my clinical training or in research studies or during my own uh, experiences with families. Uh, and yet I kept recognizing that this situation was arising following the diagnosis of ADHD, either in a child and an experience that the parents were having to the diagnosis or in adults with ADHD when they receive the diagnosis. I, I checked this out with many of my colleagues who also said, you know what, I think I'm seeing this as well in my own clinical work. And that is the experience of a grief reaction upon the diagnosis of the disorder, either in the adult being diagnosed or in the parents of a child who has been diagnosed. This was so important to me in my clinical practice that I encouraged other clinicians to take time during the feedback session with adults with ADHD or with parents of children with ADHD to take time to acknowledge overtly that this was likely going to be a reaction that they were going to have to this diagnosis. And as I discovered, I was among a few people who were even acknowledging that this process was occurring, uh, again, back 25 or more years ago. Uh, and families deeply appreciated my forewarning them that they might experience a grief reaction, again, either as the adult getting the diagnosis or as the parent of a child who has just been diagnosed. I encourage clinicians to take time to discuss the grief reaction if it was happening or to alert parents that it was going to happen when they left the office or to alert the adults with the diagnosis too. And then even offered to meet with them again later, perhaps in a week or so after they had had a chance to process the information we were giving them about ADHD, what it meant, how it needed to be treated. In my experience, if people did not go through this grief reaction or did not negotiate it successfully, it often interfered not only with their acceptance of their diagnosis, but with their capacity to pursue treatment, effective treatment, for the diagnosis. So I want to talk about this very briefly here because I think it remains an important topic that is under discussed, uh, under mentioned in the literature. Now, luckily, I'm finding more online about this process, this reaction to the diagnosis, but it still remains certainly understudied in the research literature and I believe unrecognized or underrecognized in our clinical work and our clinical textbooks in workshops for clinicians that forewarns them to look for this grief reaction, expect it, and if they don't see it, to be on the alert for problems that are going to ensue in providing further clinical services to this individual. Now, there's a few websites out there that talk about that. This is the CADAC website, which is the National Foundation in Canada for ADHD. Uh, and it's a first person account of having this grief reaction. I really enjoyed reading this, but there are other guides out there as well. For instance, over at the ADHD Center, which is a UK uh, website over in Great Britain. There's a, another nice article talking about the five stages or phases of grieving upon the diagnosis. Both of those, by the way, those websites deal with adult ADHD. There's also WebMD, which again has a first person account of a grief reaction by a young woman from India, where she talks about, again, 
going through the stages of grieving. Finally, I'm going to come back and talk about the only research paper I've seen on grieving, and that was 17 years ago down in Australia at the University of Western Australia by my friend Steve Houghton and colleagues Mira Taylor and Tom O'Donohue. So we'll come back to that one because it talks about parental grieving of the diagnosis in child or in a child. Now let's go back to the Caddock website here and you'll see Lisa's story where she talks about the fact that following her diagnosis of adult ADHD, and by the way, not being forewarned to expect a grief reaction, as I recommend, she began to go through what she recognized were the phases of grieving. Now, we no longer think of them as really stages that occur in a sequence as Kubler-Ross first identified them decades ago in her seminal work on grieving. Instead, they're phases. They may not all occur. They may not occur in the same sequence for everybody, but these phases do seem to crop up in many individuals. Upon the diagnosis, of course, many people talk about the first reaction they have is one of denial. This can't be me. This can't be my disorder. I thought this was just a temporary difficulty that I could get some assistance with and move on and lead a normal life. So there's kind of a denial of the diagnosis or of the seriousness of the diagnosis or of the chronicity, the chronic nature of the diagnosis. This often is short-lived. And what we then find is people moving on to a phase that typically is either one of anger or depression or both. Now, why anger? Because the adult with ADHD or the parent of an ADHD child is angry when they begin reevaluating their past and how long it took to get information, accurate information about themselves or their child. They're angry at previous professionals. They're angry at their parents or at others, such as teachers in the case of a child, who may have denied that there was a problem or minimized that there was a problem. They may be angry at earlier professionals who failed to recognize and diagnose the condition. They're angry about the things that could have been had this disorder been recognized and treated earlier, the problems that they didn't necessarily need to experience. In the case of adults, it may have been limiting their education, impacting their social relationships, leading them to have job problems or difficulties with others on the job, or leading them to having marital or other intimate relationship problems. All of these losses come back to them as they grieve this diagnosis, leading them to both experience anger and perhaps experience some depression around this late diagnosis of themselves or of their child. Then people to talk about, excuse me, the phase of bargaining. I don't often see this one, but people have discussed it in these websites, uh, and that is that they begin to bargain with themselves. Oh, I could just try harder. I could lift myself up by my bootstraps. I'll just apply more effort to the problem, and it's going to become less of a difficulty or even no difficulty at all. So there's this back and forth with whether I'm accepting the diagnosis or not, or that maybe there are things I could do to help get rid of this or minimize it. Uh, but there's a, a sort of bargaining that goes on. And again, this can vacillate with the other phases. These phases don't just come and are resolved and then go away. You may find that you're going back into earlier phases, depending upon your situation or life circumstances. And then finally, people talk about the phase of acceptance, where I truly accept this condition, its chronicity, its seriousness, and my need for long-term treatment in order to manage this condition in myself or in my child. And then people move into a sort of a proactive stage of pursuing and adopting evidence-based treatments and incorporating them into their life and even owning 
their ADHD as part of who they are, or in the case of parents, as part of who their child happens to be. So if you want, have a look at these websites. There are others out there as well that talk about this process of grieving the diagnosis of ADHD, but understand that it is there and that it's something that most people with ADHD or most parents are going to experience. And as these first person accounts talk about, or as they talk about at the ADHD center, not going through these stages and resolving these grief reactions can preclude acceptance of the disorder or preclude getting appropriate treatment for the disorder. It may lead people to sort of doctor shopping until they get the right information they want to hear rather than the information they need to hear. It might lead them to searching the internet for magic bullets, the quick cures for ADHD, which of course are not out there. And it just leaves them open to be preyed upon by commercial predators who are selling the various snake oils, if you will, for ADHD, either for themselves or for their child with, with ADHD. And I think uh, it can also interfere with continuing the treatment process as they go through their life uh, and where they continue to come back and question the diagnosis. Uh, I also think that for many individuals, uh, resolving the grief reaction and coming to accept the disorder is one of the most important stages in the therapeutic process for ADHD, far more than getting medication, getting parent training, getting classroom assistance for your child, getting CBT for your own adult ADHD. To me, step one in this process of pursuing and engaging treatment effectively was going through and resolving this grief reaction. Many parents have told me, as have adults with ADHD, that the grief process doesn't really completely resolve and go away and never return. They may find that as they get treatment, as things are improving in their life, that the grief process is put in the background, which is great. But they may also find that when a crisis erupts, particularly if it's related to their ADHD, especially if it's unmanaged ADHD, they may go back through the grief process again. Maybe not quite so strongly, but they may re-grieve. Parents in particular have told me this when things are going well with their child, only to find that a critical incident occurs and back comes a sort of milder form of this grieving of their child's diagnosis. In all of these cases, whether they be adults or parents of ADHD children, uh, I find that people do need to have this grief reaction. Uh, and as I said, if they don't have it, I'm concerned about whether or not they're going to engage treatment appropriately. So just wanted you to know that grieving is part of a natural reaction to a diagnosis especially of a neurodevelopmental or even a more serious medical condition, of course, which we all know, uh, and that it can be healthy to acknowledge, to grieve, to then accept one's diagnosis, and then to move through the stages of grieving so that we can then get on with proactively treating this condition in ourselves or in our children. So it's nice to see that there is more on grieving and the ADHD diagnosis out there, still very little research out there, um, but there's at least a few websites that I'll put in the description, and I'm sure you can find others as well. And by the way, I want to end with that paper that was from Australia, this one being about parents who had a child diagnosed with ADHD. It's one of the few, if only, studies that I could find. And they did document in the 33 parents that they spoke to following the diagnosis of a child in their ADHD center, that they did move through these phases of grieving and that it was important to talk about it, maybe get counseling about it, to go through the process and effectively grieve, and then reach the stage of acceptance and then proactive parenting 
of the ADHD child. So I'll put this paper in the description as well. So uh, let me know what you think about this. And if you went through this as well with your own diagnosis uh, or that of your child, and also to help others who might read your replies, talk about what you found that might have been useful to you, your negotiating the grief reaction and coming to acceptance. I think that would be very helpful, not only for me to learn from you about this, but also for others who are viewing this channel and this particular video might be helpful to themselves as well. So thank you for joining me for this particular commentary. I hope you found it useful. And as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, recommend the channel to others if you think they might benefit from it. And again, as always, thank you for being a viewer of this channel and for taking ADHD seriously enough to want to pursue science-based information about it. So take care, everybody, and as always, be well.